Sonic the Hedgehog is a degenerate franchise for perverted maniacs that are sexually attracted to sentient toilets. So it's no wonder that in 2019, Paramount Studios decided they wanted to make a movie based off this franchise. Now look, being a fan of Sonic is hard, I'll admit it. For one, it's really hard to tell emotions on people's faces. For two, you have to really like trains. Then Sega comes along in like 1991 or 92 and says you have to like this guy too. And they're not even gonna make good games for him. What is this? <laughs> this new Sonic game looks like Halo 3 Forge. <laughs> what is this? Nah. Nah, Sega hired this man. Oh man, hey, oh no, Sega hired this man, guys. Yeah, I'm a YouTuber. Talking shit about Sonic the Hedgehog will someday buy my mama a house. But I bring up Sonic's bizarre and horrible reputation because today, we have to talk about this guy. For those of you who are three years old or have a life and don't remember or something, back in 2019, Paramount Studios dropped the trailer for their upcoming movie, Sonic the Hedgehog. But what was supposed to be a day at Jubilee where hugs and kisses were shared with great delight quickly turned to shit as the internet did what it does best and got really pissed off about Sonic the Hedgehog because he looked like shit. Now back in my day, people who cared what Sonic looked like were called Chris Chan, and they maced GameStop employees because they were a bad bitch. But in just a few short years, apparently everyone else became Chris Chan because for about a week in late April, early May of 2019, demanding a Sonic redesign became the most important thing in the world. More important than... Okay, I guess it was the most important thing in the world that week. Now, most movie studios would just say, fuck you, eat your slop, and most people would be content to just eat their slop. But what the first Sonic movie is most notable for, above anything else it did, was that it actually listened to the fans and redesigned Sonic so that it was more EPIC and VIDEO GAME. <laughs> yeah, video games are EPIC and change is scary. But look, that was all information you already knew. You know, I, I, just, I just told you a bunch of things that you already know about, probably. I, I, remember, I, I remember this one time... I was watching a video essay, and the guy, the guy, exp like, he explained what the Simpsons were. Like, think about that for a second. This guy wrote down his script, and he thought, you know, some people might not know what the Simpsons are. I better, I better tell him that it's an animated adult comedy that satirizes American life. I better tell him that. I feel like I just did the same thing. Whatever, you're not, you're not listening. This is, you're not listening. This is just noise. You're like, you're like on your phone right now, Michael. Oh, now you're looking up? Oh, you're looking up because I'm talking to you, Michael? After the redesign was revealed and the film finally did come out, most people kind of just blindly praised it and ignored all the generic, boring, not Sonic stuff in it, which ultimately is fine because the sequel that came out this year kind of went the fuck off. Yeah, I went to that movie, I watched the 3 p.m. Sunday showing, and I stood up and I clapped. But thanks to the Chippendale Rescue Rangers movie coming out a few weeks ago, which I also stood up and clapped for, including a cameo from Ugly Sonic, it had a lot of people reflecting on that week in 2019 and wondering, were we the real monsters? Did we... Did we do something wrong here? Personally, I'd say no because I've always been about this life. The rest of you, this is Andrew Garfield Spider-Man all over again. Do not come at me in these comments saying that you've always been about this shit because I know you have not. Ugly Sonic is something endlessly fascinating to me. Not only is it something that I think Sonic fans fully deserved, not for like malicious reasons, but mostly because I think Sonic fans are God's chosen people. I mean, I mean, if it's not the tribes of Judea and it's not the black Israelites, it's probably Sonic fans. You must give your strongest soldiers your hardest battles. But it's also such a strange thing to ever have happened in the first place. I mean, look at this. He's got small beady eyes. He looks like Goblin caught on tape. He has white fur instead of gloves. He's like really, really weirdly proportioned. He has human teeth. And worst of all, why is he wearing shoes? Why can't I see his feet? I want to smell his feet. I wanted this movie to have a scratch and sniff card where I could s sniff every piece of Sonic and see what it smells like in there. Now anyone can see that this is just the stuff of nightmares, which is why I, would I wanted it in a children's film. Like it's clearly the result of just like raw focus group testing and like data and numbers being put into practice with no regard for humanity, no regard for soul. It's like blatantly uncanny, but because they had like numbers and graphs that told them this would test well, they just did it. Just this nightmarish, horrible design because, well, this number said it will be alright. 
there's something kind of magical about that in its own way. This design is like an AI-generated image or sentence or something. It makes no sense, but it's kind of beautiful because of that. It's utterly soulless and bizarre and uncanny, and I love it! I mean, look though, this is what Sonic would look like in the real world. He wouldn't be some cute cartoon character, he would be scary and you would kill him. Sonic the Hedgehog wouldn't be my friend, he would be shot. You could argue that this was done intentionally by the director as a meta-commentary on the Sonic franchise itself, trying so hard to be cute and cool and hip, but actually just being this utterly bizarre, ugly, just strange thing that only brings out the absolute worst of humanity. I mean, look, guys, Halo doesn't do this to people. There, Halo does not, you can say, you can say that every fan base has its bad parts. Halo does not do this to people. Mario doesn't do this to people. All I'm saying is why does Sonic? Even aside from the fandom, because look, every fan base has bad eggs. I mean, look at me. These shitheads don't even know they're subscribed to me. Now I've personally theorized that this design might have initially been a pitch to kill off the franchise entirely, turn it into a source of mockery not just for gamers, but everyone. Make it so that even your aunt would know that Sonic sucks. It's not fucked up. She doesn't need to know that. And similarly, people have theorized that this was a marketing stunt, make the shittiest design possible, and then reveal the redesign and delay as a way to make people blindly love the movie. Which, you know, if you could predict people that well, would be insane, but ultimately, both my theory and that one kind of fall apart because it's like, you know, what company would invest so much time and resources and money into making themselves look like a, a laughing stock and humiliate themselves on such a grand stage? I mean, that'd be ridiculous. At the end of the day, Ugly Sonic would have no doubt destroyed the series, at least the film franchise it would have. And it would probably be considered the worst video game movie of all time. A score it doesn't deserve, but it also doesn't deserve the best of all time either. Its sequel probably does. But I guess this all just goes to show you that design can make or break you. In all honesty though, I just like it when a lot of people are really pissed off about something. And I think this would have been really funny, and we probably would have got a lot of pretty good Twitter reaction images out of it. So I guess what I'm saying is, hashtag release the ugly Sonic cut. Let's go viral, guys.